we have to be relentless. We have to be relentless and we can't be scared of a little bit of uh, controversy, a little bit of, um, you know, resistance, because it's usually on the other side of that resistance that will experience breakthrough. Chat GPT is, in my opinion, is like the best thing since the internet came out. Hey, how's it going? It's Tim Brown, and this is the Plumbing and HVAC Hustle Podcast. And we are fucking stoked to have Corey Barrier on today. How are you doing, Corey? I'm good, brother. How are you? I am actually incredible. Because I love the beginning of the year, man. I love it. I love new goals. I love just the fresh vibes of like a whole new year. It's terrifying. I've got giant goals, way bigger than last year. So I'm, I'm scared, but I'm excited. Yeah. I would argue that scared could just be excited. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so look at anxiety. And that's one way to think about anxiety that helps kind of like heal it a little bit. It's like, it's actually excitement. Anxiety yeah. is a little bit of excitement. I like that. So, yeah. Corey, could you give like a one or two minute background on what you're doing and, you know, like where you come from and stuff like that? And I'll tell the audience now quick at the beginning that we're going to be talking about how to make your own GPTs. And if you are just getting into chat GPT, we're going to talk about what it is, what's a custom GPT, what are, what are the types of things? We're going to give you seven, seven ideas for GPTs that you could make, but we're just getting started. This is all really cool stuff. Corey, what's a quick background though? Sure. So I'm, I'm a natural born sales guy. I've been in the trades for about four years. I consult and coach. Uh, HVAC and plumbing companies primarily. I've worked in other venues, but primarily that's the two company, two areas I focus on. I've got a pretty big podcast. It's ranked pretty high uh, in the whole country, world, actually. Uh, I've written a couple of books on sales. And dude, I, you know, I got into the trades because I love trades people because I act like most of them. I got ADHD. <laughs> you know, recovering yeah. alcoholic, yeah. you know, just a lot of the same traits. And so I, my specialty is bringing an outside perspective uh, into a very closed minded industry, so mm -hmm. to speak. Sure. I uh, love to hear it. And um, it sounds like you're doing some training with another coach recently as well. Um, yep. Uh, what field. are you doing with, the, with that right now? Great question. So we're doing, um, we are doing a virtual uh, sales training program. We started in February and once a week, we're going to meet with everybody that enrolls or that is currently enrolled and we're going to work on mindset and we're going to work on sales. Two awesome. very important things in the industry. Awesome. All right, let's get into this GPT stuff. It's a little overwhelming for some people, but let's just break it down in the simplest possible terms. What is chat GPT? So chat GPT is, in my opinion, is like the best thing since the internet came out. It, mm -hmm. Quite frankly, it is the biggest thing since the internet came out. And, you know, we could spend the next six days talking about all the things that it does. So chat GPT is really an engine, so to speak, a knowledge engine that will answer questions. Any question that you want it to, the more specific questions you have for it, the better answers you're going to get. Good data in, good data out, right? Mm -hmm. And ChatGPT is an, a language model, right? Like it's synthesizing information from around the internet. I like to tell it things. Little, we're going to do a lot of little tips in here about how to get better at this because it's not just you using it, it's you using it well, right? So if you've right. messed with it for two hours, over Christmas or something like that. It's not the same as if you've spent 20 hours with it, trying to challenge it and use it to use, do real things. So, and Corey and I both have probably done hundreds of hours of chat GPT. So frankly, at this point, we're probably, you know, more experts than a lot of people out there. So we want to share that information. One, I like to challenge it because it doesn't always, it sometimes it references old information. So I challenge it a lot of times. I challenge it to search the internet and look for things because it does. It uses Bing, but essentially it will search the internet and look at sources and things. I like to give it 
chunk smaller chunks of information like pdfs like guides and different things like for several of these i've trained it i'll use traction the book traction because that's our operating system as a business right. and i ask it to give me answers based on our operating system giving it smaller chunks of information now so how would you do that yeah um you essentially just attach it as a PDF and you say, can you use the information from this PDF? I give it the name of the PDF and I say, can you use the information from this PDF in giving me your answer? And a custom GPT um, is one where you could essentially give it all this one time. You could give it a set of instructions one time and it will save those instructions to give you information. Um, how would you describe a, a custom GPT? Because this is very new. This just happened. It is pretty new. So I don't want people to get confused about, uh, don't go to custom GPT to look this up. So when he says custom GPT, there's inside of chat GPT or, or other softwares, you can build a specific GPT. For example, I'll use something kind of out of the yeah. industry. Uh, I'm doing keto diet right now. So I yeah. built a GPT that would give me information on keto diet, right? Mm -hmm. Based on the information that I, uh, I load into it. Yeah. And so you can go back by the way and add stuff to it, right? It's not, you, you, you don't have to just put it all in one time. Yeah. You can add, yeah. So you can go back and add stuff to it. Which and literally like, just to get everyone kind of excited, like, it's not hard. If you haven't done this, go do it. It does require the premium subscription, 20 bucks a month. Like we said, like this is, you know, he's saying best, like basically the biggest thing since the internet. I definitely think at least since social media, that's my take, but it could be bigger, right? It could be much bigger than social media just because it's kind of got this create, it's like creating itself now. You know what I mean? Right. And so what you do, honestly, you don't have to know how to program or anything. You go in, you say, I want to create a GPT. You, and you essentially like there's a spot in the menu and stuff on chat GPT where you say, I want to create a new GPT. And then you just describe what you want it to do in plain language. You just type out what you want it to do. And then you provide right. like PDFs or ask it where you want to get the info, tell it where you want to get the information from. But you're essentially, just describing it in plain language. So you don't have to know a bunch of stuff. And frankly, maybe even us trying to give a tutorial is too much explanation because you just getting in there and trying this will be enough. Now, I want to also talk about what are the limitations right now? Like what are the types of pains that ChatGPT and custom GPTs are capable of solving? And what is it not capable of solving, Corey? So it, it solves a lot more than it doesn't solve. And yeah. look, if you, we said this a minute ago, good data in, good data out. So if you're asking it the right question, likely, very likely, you're going to get the right answer out. Now, if you don't mm -hmm. ask it the right question, likely you're going to get bad data out. So just know that going into it. If you're, if you ask it a question about, I don't know, uh, well, I'll just stay with the, if you ask it a question about, how do I install a condenser in a carrier X whatever model? It's going to tell you exactly how to do it, which mm -hmm. is extremely powerful when you think about a technician standing out by a house waiting on a service manager to answer their call for two hours, mm -hmm. right? To answer that question. That's the old way of doing things. The new way of doing things is you just type that question in chat GPT, especially if it's tra a trained GPT, and it just spits that question or spits yeah. that answer out for you. And if you tested this without custom GPTs before, you should test again. You should test things like this again. So you can get it to explain stuff. I think you should find smaller chunks of information to get better data. So let's say guides or manuals or things. You can train it on your own company's information. And we'll talk about that in a second. But we're really going to list seven ways that we've done this and you can do this for an HVAC or plumbing or any home service business. So this is just a starter list to get excited and to get into it. So let's get into this list 
Um, and the first one that I'm going to suggest here is creating quizzes for your people. So I can put in a PDF, let's say of a guy, like, let's say we have an employee handbook. I can attach the PDF to an employee, like the employee handbook. And I can say, can you come up with a 20 point quiz? Like, no offense, but like, that's all, that's a lot of work to kind of like get in there and make a quiz to just prove comprehension and prove that somebody read something, but your HR person, your, if it's you, like you can put this in and say, Hey, make a 20 point quiz and you can make it custom every time. So they couldn't cheat. So essentially you can, right. I, I have a, you know, I call it quiz maker, but I have one and I'm not telling you to use mine. Although we might include some links to our GPTs in the description of this podcast. It's not about using ours. It's you can make these very easily. All you do is describe it. So we're just going to give you some examples, but I'm my first example is making quizzes based on type documents that you have either your manuals or like manufacturer specs or things like this. So that's my first one. What do we got for number two? Yeah. Internal data. So most companies should have SOPs. Most companies should have all that stuff built out to where when the new employee starts, they have similar to the, as you mentioned, the handbook, but also policies and procedures, vacation policies, uh, missed days policies, all of those things. And you can take that information that you've already built out or paid somebody really good money to build out and train the data on that information. And now what you can do is that when that new employee starts, you can give them the GPT, then they can start asking questions about, uh, it's a shortcut, really is what it is. It's a shortcut to get the exact answer you're looking for without thumbing through a bunch of paperwork. Mm, that's incredible. And you've got, you've got, you've started to do this for companies, like you'll, you'll do this for them if, if they would like. It's, honestly, I don't, sorry, Corey, not to bust in on your business here, but you can do this too, right? Like it's not that crazy hard to do. Um, the almost like it's the, the thought, the thought is valuable, right? So if we're telling you to do this now, you could go talk to some guru and do it. But like, what about just like, let's use this as a brainstorming time. Go try this now, go try this now. And right. I think some people with chat GPT or AI, because they're advanced in their business, let's say they're 20 million or hundred million, or they're a business owner. Like people get used to delegating and so they'll delegate, but this is one of those times. And I think there's these come up every once in a while where technology is breaking through at such a level. I strongly recommend you familiarize yourself with this technology. Gary V was at Pantheon, um, service Titans Pantheon and, and Rilla AI brought in Gary V, which was so cool. I got to meet him and shake his hand and hang out with him. It was fucking sweet. But he just, he just challenged everyone, spend 20 hours, spend 20 hours with AI this next year or this next six months if you haven't, because it's really understanding the use cases and it's hard to push your people to do something if you've never done it. You know, it's hard to do. It's hard to instigate them and say, all right, everyone go learn AI when frankly, it might take a few of their jobs, you know, which you really could. And I mean, like not to be fear mongering or anything, but like, that's why CEOs need to spend time with us. All right. I've got number three here on this. If you want to describe any more on in using companies, internal data. Okay. Yeah, number cool. three thinking tool. So, for instance, I made a external brain recently. I call it a uh, Timbot and I put everything and then you could go do this. Now you, you brain dump all your core values are all, all of your goals for the year. You know what you've been the last few years on revenue, what you're trying to do this year, all of, all of the information that you can possibly think of for your business. That's key information. Let's say that you'd share with a consultant. Here's all of our information. This is what's going on. You'd spend, honestly, this exercise, even though it's super fun and cool and it's going to be very valuable, it would take a couple hours. So you put the first hour you spend getting all that brain dump onto a PDF. 
you put it into GPT, you say, utilize this, but in another window, you say, you put in that PDF and you say, ask me 30 follow-up questions that would help you more comprehensively understand my HVAC or plumbing business and make sure that by the end of these answers that you could almost consult with me about my problems and give and brainstorm ideas. And then you, you put in the PDF that you had with the brain dump and then it asks, here's 30 follow-up questions. And you put that in another PDF, let's say in a doc and then save it as PDF where it's like, answer, spend an hour and answer all 30 of those questions. And it will ask really good questions because it's got, it's got tight data on your company, that first PDF that you did. So now you have a second PDF, you put that into creating the GPT and you say, based on this, these two documents, I want you to consult with me and ask good questions and give me answers on questions I have for you. And I want you to act as a kind of a second and external brain for me and help me brainstorm and come up with solutions. And I want you to be confident. You can tell it to be things you wish you were. I want you to be confident and give me very confident answers and very good follow-up questions. You're, you are a small business, HVAC, like that, that is one other tip that we, I'm sure Corey and I have already been doing for a year is like, you tell it what you want it to be, the frame That's you right. want it to be in. So I want you to act as a confident and charismatic HVAC and plumbing uh, or HVAC um, consultant HVAC. and coach for me. Right. And so then you put it in with all this, these two documents and based on your data, what is it, what is it that coaches and consultants, I mean, this isn't ever going to replace anybody, but like, what is it really partly why they end up getting really good is because of so much context. And like yes. I said, this is never going to replace that for real, but the amount of context that you give it is more likely to give you better answers. And, uh, you know, this is a really interesting way to use ChatGPT. I think on this higher level kind of brainstorming things, I really love ChatGPT because it just gets you out. Like if I asked it how to, now I'm going to ask that bot, like, Hey, what training systems could I put in this year to increase comprehensive comprehension for my team? It's just giving me a bunch of ideas. It doesn't mean every idea is going to be a banger. It means right. there's 20 ideas and two or three of them I've already done. I, I, there's things in my business that are happening now that were, that were coming from ChatGPT. And now all of my team is benefiting from our training systems that we have that I built out three, six months ago, just asking ChatGPT and giving it a bunch of context. A hundred percent. And if there's a specific sales system that you would like it to use, I'll give you an example. Sandler sales system, for example, okay. uh, one of the better sales, one of the better sales trainings out there, you can ask it to present the information as it would as Sandler sales. And that's oh, exactly yeah. What and you yeah. can also make it role play with you. So you 100%. can make a a home services sales role play machine for your people. And it's only a matter of time. It's going to be, it's just probably already happening. Like where it's going to spit out audio and receive. Audio. It's already happening. Already okay. happening. That's so I could cool. sit here right now and role play with it. And it would ask me questions. What's so special about this conference is the fact that it's so intimate compared to others out there where you have hundreds of people where you can barely get FaceTime. The subject matter experts that we have here, it's just unmatched. There's hundreds of different groups out there, but not all groups do it the same way. And you're gonna learn something different here that can implement in your business. If you guys aren't at this event, what we just went over today with Joe Cacera step-by-step with a call-by-call is amazing. If your team is struggling with installations, with getting guys to perform, got to be at this event for Joe Cacera. Yeah, that's incredible. So yeah, there you go. There's that's number three. What about number four? What do you got for us? So, uh, so I, as I mentioned, I host a podcast and show notes have been the bane of my existence for years. I paid somebody to do them because they're just a nightmare. You get the transcript, you've got to 
you know, dwindle it down. So what I did is I trained my GPT on pulling out keywords, um, pulling out the tags, pulling out and creating uh, the show notes for me, as well as the, and this is important, when you ask, everybody's seen posts that have emojis in it and they have weird language in it. Yeah. Like you, you know, things that we would never say. Well, you know, that's built by chat GPT. So what you can do and what I did is I had it take out all emotional language. So it doesn't use those freely weird words that doesn't sound like anything I would ever say. Yeah. Right. And so it's really important to, again, data, good data in, good data out. So remove emotional language in the show notes. And so it doesn't say, oh, you had an exhilarating time with Tim. Uh, <laughs> right. It, it's just weird. Right. Although it was kind of exhilarating, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I love that. So spinning out show notes is that one that you'd be willing to share in the in the sure. uh, description because I think that one's super useful too. Um, I'll share this next one as well: creating blog posts from YouTube. So essentially, what I do is I copy and paste. You can go down to the transcript on YouTube, and you can. Click transcript, open it up, get rid toggle timestamps so there's not timestamps on there. Copy all of that and just put it into this GPT. And it, I mean, you could make this GPT pretty easily as well with your formatting preferences and however you want to do it. You could also make it specific to your company. So you could give it, all right, and always remember my three unique value propos propositions are boop, boop, boop. You know, you right. could give it that so that it always builds that into every single blog post, right? That's super cool. So it could be your company, home services, blog builder, right? Or something like that. And then you copy and paste the one that I've built, you copy and paste a YouTube transcript. And I like that because it's sourcing like a subject matter experts information. So... Yeah. I do this on videos that I've made. I do it when I shadow a, a high performing salesperson or I do a company tour or whatever and extract the key information. I asked it to build in headlines that describe the text below. I asked it to use bullet points, but only very occasionally. And I asked it to um, never say in conclusion, because I hate that about ChatGPT. I always says, in conclusion. Anyways, I asked it all my preferences, right? I asked it to do that. And then now it just takes this transcript and turns it into this blog post that is based on my preferences for blog posts. And I tell it, like, don't make stuff up as much. I want it to be based on the real strategies that are shared in this video. Give the real tips and the real strategies based on this transcript. So now it's it's very quickly, now I don't have to, cause I used to do that, but I used to have to like save the prompt off to the side and put in it with the, with the um, transcript. I use this every single week. Um, yeah. And so boom, boom, boom. Now we've got this down to a very low amount of work to just put in a transcript and get a blog post and copy and paste it because it's saved all this information. I don't have to go into my notes and find my prompts. So boom, that's, that's number five. All right. So we're going to hit number six. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, every, you know, most people are on social media and social media content feels like you always have to come up with something new. You always have to come up with something catchy. You got to try to grab people's attention and that can take a lot of time unless you're just extremely creative. So one of the things that I've done is I've created an HVAC specific social guru is what I called it. And it will create, if I say, all right, create content around the new refrigerant that came out in 2024 and create a, a blog, a, create a LinkedIn post, create a Facebook post, an Instagram post, a Twitter post, uh, you know, fill in the blank. It'll spit out all of those things based around that refrigerant request, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it reduces the amount of time and brain power of coming up with content. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's incredible. And I think a really good 
way to use custom GPTs. I also think like you could do, you could train it on more specific stuff to your company. If you want to, Yeah, I think that people can, um, well, if it's cool with you, Corey, can we include that one in the show notes sure. as well? So use sure. his, but then also like if you train it on your differentiating features too, if you find, if you make one that's gets more of your company's information, boom, you can have your own social guru that has all your context of your business. Um, number seven, and I think this is something you could use to train that one, right? Is I, I have a review based marketing GPT where what you do is you go to exportcomments.com and you export your Google reviews with that website. You export the last hundred of them and you can train it. So it used to be a character limit. I feel like they're getting rid of is it are they did they get rid of the character limit on it's pretty large now at this point. Okay, so it's larger better. than most people would need. Yeah. So you could copy all one hundred of your last, you know, Google reviews. I think that the free version of export comments, Google reviews is a hundred. So you could copy all 100 of those, including the names, copy and put, like it exports a Excel file. You copy with the names and the dates and the review and you put it into chat GPT. Um, and this particular one, and it essentially will spit out three differentiating features based on your reviews with a little snippet of a testimonial or a, a review that, that reflects that. And I've said, I want you to do things that are uncommon. Like I don't want you to do customer service or quality materials. I want you to try to like think outside the box. I want you to try to do things that are outside of what these very common ones are that are repetitive. So then it spits out these three things and I'm gonna include that one in the comments as well, but you could make something like this where it's essentially aggregating customer data to find patterns. And I think that in a home service business, aggregating customer preferences, aggregating feedback, all these different things that you've got going on in your business with touch points and, and feedback, you could utilize this to find patterns, to create uh, like um, better communication. Cause I think marketing is best when you're really just reflecting the best customers and what they're saying consistently. You're just reflecting them. You're making them look good. You're making, you know, you're sh I like showing ideal customers on the website, smiling and video testimonials. And I say, even use the snippets, real quotes from reviews in your headlines on your website. And I, I, I coined this, this is my last bit here, trustimonials, um, where you have a face, the, the smiling face of the person who left it, five-star reviews, and the Google logo, in addition to a small snippet of the review. I call that a trustimonial. I think every website should have trustimonials on it. So I'll take that a step further. You could also do that. So let's just say your website is you know, hookagency.com, and I wanted to know, I'm your, I'm your competitor. So I could type into chat GPT, go to hookagency.com and, and tell me what the most common reviews are, negative reviews on hookagency.com. And my, my guess is I can almost guarantee that you can do it just exactly the way I just said. And it would just spit out all the reviews from your site or, or a competitor site. And now you know where the handicap is in mm -hmm. your competitor, right? You know yep. what people are complaining about. Well, what's the best way to, market is solve those people's problems right yep. exactly i think that that's a really a really good one find the gaps in the market with this as well i think that that's that's huge like this is just a start guys like this is this is us giving seven examples to get you inspired and to come up with your own ideas and we know this is progressing very fast so this might not be this might not be as comprehensive about what GPTs are in a year from now, but we're in January 5th of 2024. This is where we're at. This should be a really good piece of content for the next three to six months. It's pretty cool how fast all this is going. Um, and we're going to continue to like be at the forefront of it. Corey is going to continue to be at the forefront of it. Um, Corey, could you give any other things that you think people should know or think about with ChatGPT? And then also, could you give where they could get in contact with you? 
Sure. So um, one thing that I want to drive home is, you know, when you think about AI, it scares a lot of people. And I don't want people to be scared of this technology because it it's here and it is not going anywhere. And if you don't dive into the things that we're talking about today, this is just a, a tip of the iceberg. You're going to get left behind because there are companies out there that are diving into this. And what's going to happen is they're so quickly going to surpass everybody else in the market. I, I'm afraid you're going to be screwed if you don't. So mm-hmm. I would just suggest that Listen, you know, go back and re-listen to this conversation because, again, this could be a total game changer for your company. Um, mm-hmm. And people can get a hold of me, Corey, C-O-R-E-I, well, you can put it in the show notes, I'm sure, Corey at CoreyBarrier.com. Uh, or you can get, and you can also go to AIAutomationsGroup.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Corey, AIAutomationsGroup.com. Now, I've got two last little segments for you. Um the first one is hot takes and cold trends. Corey, what's a hot take? Something that might be controversial that you, a, a, a belief that you really have about the HVAC plumbing home service industry that you'd like to share with people. What's, what's a hot take? All right. So I would say uh, there's a couple of companies out there that can monitor your system from in, inside of their company. In other words, if you've got 500 customers, they can monitor through AI, they can monitor your customer's systems. Here's the hot take. If you can monitor customer systems, if you can predictively analyze when that system's going to break down, it gives you the ability to now call the customer and say, hey, we need to come out and service your, your, your unit. On the other side of that, uh, you can save yourself a trip every single year. Most guys go out twice a year. They roll a truck. It's three to five hundred dollars, uh, and lots of times they don't sell anything. So therefore, what's one of those systems or what, like what's an example of that technology? So you got Smart AC is a good example. Smart okay. AC. You, you go to smartac.com. I'm pretty sure. Uh, or you, I, I interviewed um, the guy on my podcast. I'm completely drawing a blank on his name at this point. Um, no, but that's sweet. Man. That's super oh, cool. Josh Tickle is his name. Yeah. And um, what about cold trends? What's something people are spending time, money, energy, or effort on that they should stop? So, look, this is not necessarily a dig towards all service managers, but the shitty service managers out there are costing companies a lot of money. Um they're lots of times they're egomaniacs. Lots of times they are running shit the way they want to run shit. And it's costing the company a fortune because the owner doesn't want to look at their right hand man who's essentially costing the owner money, but because he's either doesn't want to hurt their feelings or he's lazy or whatever the case may be, he just turns a blind eye. And it costs companies far more than the salary of that service manager. Mm-hmm. It's costing yeah. you team members. It's costing you time. It's costing you effort. It's costing you a lot. And so you really need to look at that. Okay. And then the last section we have is called there's money in the phones. And this is put on by power selling Thank you guys for sponsoring the podcast and The question is, what's a system or a tip that you have for people to get more out of their call-in systems? Great question. I just talked to Brigham a few weeks ago about this. So we built an AI that will, you know, it's not uncommon to to know that people don't go back and listen to their phone calls, right? Everybody records the CSRs, the customers. So we built an AI that will give you that direct data and it'll tell you exactly how that call went in real time. So my point in bringing that up is, especially if you're a certain, it doesn't matter what field service software, most people record their calls, but nobody listens to them. Now I know Brigham offers a service that listens to those calls, but I would argue that you could, I mean, we're, we're working with some of the largest companies in the, in the world, building this out for them as we speak. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, yeah. And 
I'll give it uh, an opportunity one more time. Could you give the dot com to for people to come check you out and then I'll wrap up? Yep. The AI automations group dot com would be the best place to find us. Awesome. And thank you everyone for watching. This podcast is put on by hookagency.com, hook agency, all of our social. We're incredibly grateful to be new here uh, with HVAC and plumbing. This is episode, this is going to be like episode 20 or something, but we're, you know, we're consistent. We're going to be here. Thank you for having us in the, the industry. And um, Corey, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for taking the time to be on here. And I, I know that a lot of, uh, you know, you're connected with so many people in HVAC and plumbing and, and you're going to teach me some things, I hope about the industry. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student. So people, people can be like, Hey, Tim, you're, you know, people, the, at first they, they resist you. And then right. as time goes on, they start to love you. And, um, even if they, you know, some people hate me in this industry already. And I, I think you have to have haters, Corey. I think you have to. Thank you. I agree. It, I, I do. I know a couple competitors that already hate me, but the the point is, is we have to be relentless. We have to be relentless and we can't be scared of a little bit of uh, controversy, a little bit of, um, you know, resistance. Cause it's usually on the other side of that resistance that will experience breakthrough. So I just want to remind every, everybody of that. If you're experiencing some resistance today, that you might be about to have a breakthrough. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you for watching, listening. Uh, give it a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe. Maybe one day I'll catch up with Corey's amount of reviews. No, just kidding. I will never catch up with Corey's <laughs> amount of reviews on his podcast, the Successful Life Podcast. So guys, go check that out if you haven't yet. All right, bye.